Thank you so much, Zina. Zina, can I start in Afrikaans or should I wait for until later? Firstly, uh, actually, because we've got limited time, uh, you can fire in Afrikaans. It's good. Thank, thank you so much, man. Good afternoon, Coach. Um, goedemiddag. I'm Zaytje. Coach, I did kort. Yeah. Met jou, ek, ek vraag altyd uh, die selde vraag soort van, jou denkwijse achter die veranderings, vooral met jou kaptein, wat nou onmiddellik so in die beginspan begin. Hoekom het jy besluit, en, en die man langs in jou, hoekom bring jy hulle so onmiddellik vir hulle terug aan die wedstrijd en wat is om? Plus, ek denk, ja, as mens kyk, vir alle drie, um, sy ou praat van Sia, en jy praat van Jaden, ek bedoel, obviously Jaden het vir, vir een rede, het hy nog nie gespeel nie, so dis, dis a, um, ons wil graag soveel as moendlik uh, speeltijd in hulle inkruis wat ons kan, en um, dan, dan die selle met Sia, jy weet, as ons, uh, ons het twee wedstrijde, voor dat ons die belangrike wedstrijd in Skotland speel, wat ons uh, minute onder hulle behaald kan kry, en ons voel altyd, luister jy, as jy begin met die ou, en hy kan begin, en dan, as hy, as hy na 20 minute, 30 minute, 40 minute, 50 minute, as hy nie meer productief is nie, dan kan hy hom al afhaal en een plaas vervang, ver, vervanger opstuur. So, um, ja, dis my ons denkwijse achter dit kwestie. Ashwa? Thanks, Zina. Hi, Jacques. Hi, Jaden. Jacques, Hi. Uh, just with the, with the fly-off situation, uh, we know with Andy, not the, um, you know, and Manny's your only really specialist fly-off. Do you consider maybe giving Damon Willems a, a start at fly this time around, seeing that Manny has played most of the games this year? Um, yeah, no, we, we, we went with Marnie uh, this weekend, Ashfak, and so uh, Damien is on the bench, uh, and we just felt that uh, that selection probably uh, is the best for us, if you think in terms of the 6-2 split that we're going with. So we felt that that probably gave us the most... Uh, uh, options uh, available and I think if you can recollect we did start Damien against the All Blacks uh, at 10 yeah so he had he's got he had a a, a good stint uh, as a, uh, um, at 10 uh, um, already in the games that he that's been available Ross thanks Sina how's it guys um Jacques how important was it to uh Get Sia onto the field this week. Obviously, uh, lost uh, World Cup as well. He came in just before um, in the warm up against Japan. And uh, now again, was it very important to get him on there, um, get some minutes into him, and also just to, uh, you know, build the team now into the World Cup with the, the main captain on board? Yeah, Ross, I think yeah, it, it, it wasn't necessarily going to be this game. I mean, whenever he was ready. Um, uh, and the same with actually with Jaden, you know, Jaden also came back from a, uh, from a um, long-term injury in terms of his shoulder. So, uh, but obviously there was other reasons, but we, the, the, when, whenever they were ready, uh, uh, it would do, it would have been great to, to play them. And they are both ready and fit to go now for this game. Uh, but if Sia wasn't ready and fit this game, we would have played him the next game, you know. So, so for us, it, it, was it important? Yes, obviously. The more the more games you have uh, before the start of the World Cup uh, to give them uh, exposure and to give them game minutes, the better I would think. But it, uh, yeah, so yes, it was. It, it, it is nice to have him for two uh, two warm up games available, for both of them. Three. Hi Jacques, um, just to follow up on Percy and Ross as well, just with regards to Sia and uh, Jaden as well, just how how many minutes will you guys looking to get out of him in his first um, warm-up game? Because obviously uh, injuries is a big problem at the moment. We just saw that um, Francis lost their fly-off as well. So um, I'm sure injuries is something that's, uh, you know, you don't want to lose any valuable players before the World Cup. Um, so how many minutes are you guys looking to get out of Jaden and, and Sia? Yeah, I think that the, the uh, like I've mentioned uh, uh, to Percy in Afrikaans, I think uh, as much as they stay productive, you know, the moment they lose lose their productivity, we'll probably substitute them. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, on the, on the injury thing, I mean, uh, uh, injuries is part of it, uh, uh, and that's why I think now, if you look back, uh, that's why we are managing the load, trying to manage the load of the players, uh, and uh, we're trying to to split the game minutes between the players, and that's why we had two extra warm up games, uh, or we have 
two, uh, we had three warm-up games in terms of Argentina and then now Wales and then New Zealand so that we can actually split the game minutes, you know, uh, and split the load. That's what we meant in the beginning when we, when we said, listen, we're trying to split the load between the players, that you don't have to expose them week in, week out, week in, week out. So that that's what we, we're trying to achieve uh, from our side. Yeah. Thank you, Gina. Thank you, Jacques. Thank you, Jaden. Uh, the question is a two-part question, one for Jacques, the first part for Jacques, and the second one for Jaden on a personal level. Jacques, what, what do you hope? I know you always go out to win and you want to win and you want to get momentum in going into the World Cup, but what do you hope to get from the team or what do you hope to see from the team in a game perspective? And then, Jaden, your personal goals for this game. Um, yes, I think in terms of uh, what we would like to see from the team is, is probably it would be nice uh, to 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 uh, to get some momentum going into the World Cup. So uh, in terms of that and momentum, obviously uh, winning a test match will be awesome for us because that builds nice momentum and confidence. But building in all our different departments uh, in the stuff that we were we, we're trying to get right and get confidence in before we go to the World Cup. So I would say that's what we that that would be our ultimate goal uh, uh, in terms of this test match. Yeah, by my side, I just want to go out there and enjoy it. It's my first time back playing now. I'm just super excited that I can get the opportunity to play for the Springboks again. So yeah, just going out there and enjoying myself and giving my all. Uh, Morgan? Thanks, Ina. Hi, Jock. Hi, Jaden. Um, Jock, from a team perspective, what does it mean to have Sia back on the field this week? He's obviously been with you guys training for a while. He seems to be in very high spirits. So what does it mean for you guys as a team? And Jaden, if you can chip in as well, it would be great. Yeah, in terms of, uh, yeah, obviously, it's always nice to get a player, uh, experienced player like CR back. And obviously, he's our captain and he, uh, um, over the last six years that we've been involved with the team. So, yeah, it's always nice to to, to get a guy back uh, with experience and, and the leader. And he always brings a lack of vibe. So, yeah, no, looking forward to... to uh, to having him back, it, it's awesome having him back in the in the in the build up and in the training sessions. And like you said, he's been part of the team now for for quite some time. So I, I think it's not like he was out out. You know, he was he he did his rehab with us, and he was the majority of the time with us. Although he he did his own program and his own rehab stuff on the side, he was part of the meetings. He was part of the team sessions. So uh, although he's only returning back now onto the field, he's been part of the team actually. From from the start, yes. But it's nice to get to to have him back uh, and have him playing again because he's he's worked hard and and he really deserves that, you know. Um, so yeah, yeah. So is it me again? I, I, it was my hand is from previously. Well, okay, cool. Uh, right. Um, Jock, just back on um, spreading the load. I mean, there's been a lot of talk about, you know, the injuries that have been sustained by the other teams and stuff. But I suppose the other advantage of spreading the load is that you've actually exposed a group of guys now who are in form, like you've mentioned, you know. And now suddenly you almost like feel you have a bit of an insurance policy should there be an unfortunate injury because these guys don't come in cold, you know, they actually come in form. Yeah, I think uh, um, you're 100% right. That, that was the idea behind it. And like I mentioned the other day, I mean, if, if if we probably don't win the World Cup, people will say it wasn't a good plan. But we feel when we were, when we planned it and uh, uh, as a group uh, uh, with all the specialists that we have around us and the high-performance people around us, we felt that is the the best way. We always said it. Uh, we think this World Cup will be will be uh, to defend this World Cup will take a squad performance, and and you want players that are that are in form, that have been exposed to Test match rugby, uh, that have been battle hardened. Uh, you know, um, like what we will get this weekend when we play against Wales. Well, it's going to be a nice physical battle, um, uh, and and we it, it's it's great. Um, uh, yeah, for us to go, we want to be. In form when we hit um, Scotland in that first game uh, of the World Cup, because as we we know we we're playing in a in a tough pool, and we've got a tough route, uh, um, and you you will need to be in form. You almost need to be in form to play knockout rugby from the first game. Yeah, 
Uh, we'll take two more questions online and then go to the floor. And if there is time, the rest of the hands that are up will come back to you. So we'll take uh, Kanyiswa first and then Craig Ray. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Zina. Um, good afternoon, Jacques. Good afternoon, Jaden. Um, Jacques, just take us through um your happiness in having CF back. I mean, uh, we uh, we did ask I did ask Dan yesterday about the attritional nature um of these warm up games and what we saw in the weekend with England and uh, England and France having players I uh, have key players up. But just take us through how happy you are to have CF back first and just your trepidation with regards to approaching these matches with the high rate of injuries we've seen over the past two weeks. No, uh, um, like I mentioned, I think uh, the the answer will be Kanisho. Uh, uh, um, it will be the same. Listen, it's nice to have him back. Uh, he's worked hard. He deserved to be back. Uh, and we actually had a, a long build up, uh, and and uh, yeah, the, the amount of effort and sacrifice that he have put in to to be ready now is uh, um, is um, this is probably a reward for him uh, to be ready now and to to get opportunity to play. So, and it's nice for the team to obviously have him back because he's been an integral pro part of this team for for uh, over the last uh, six years that we've been together. And uh, yeah, it will be nice to to give him some game exposure. Um, uh, hopefully, over the next couple of uh, games, to make sure that he's battle hardened and and ready and and uh, sharp uh, when we go into the World Cup and into that game against Scotland. Uh, Jacques, hi. Thanks. Uh, okay, Zina, okay. Hi. hi there. Um, just also with your physio cap on, Jacques. Uh, Hundred and sort of 115 days between the injury this year and being back on the field in a match. Uh, I mean, would this have been possible, you know, 15 years ago? I mean, it's testament to his own hard work, but I guess it's testament to medical science and things like that too, as well. Yes, I think, I think I do. do yeah, my physio at this old school physio <laughs> at. I, I think a lot of things have changed, uh, and 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 that's probably uh, the beauty of of the medical world and the science and and how specialised uh, the support staff of of our team and of the other teams have become, you know, is, uh, and the amount of effort and, uh, the, the, how, how you, uh, how they look after the people and, and the high performance environment they put around, uh, um, players who, who's got injuries. And especially with this group, I mean, we still had a squad of 42 that had to be looked after, you know, so it wasn't just, it was, uh, uh it was Eben, it was Jaden, it was, uh, um, uh, it was Siad, uh, Andre, you know, so the, um, and, uh, a lot of uh, guys that were, were, were injured and are back now, I mean, they still had to look after the guys that's on the field. So they, the, from a medical point of view, from a physio point of view, and with the physio hat on, the work that they've put in uh, and the, the performance and medical group was was outstanding uh, to look after him, but also not to neglect the other guys. Yeah, thanks. Hi, Jack. Um, hey. so you've talked a lot about CEO already, but you know his, his status as such an iconic leader for your country is clear. I mean... Has his recovery inspired the rest of the squad? Given as you said, how much dedication he put in. Yeah, I think uh, I think he mentioned it. Uh, he actually drew drew a lot of uh, um, encouragement from guys with previous injuries. So there's a lot of guys in the group that had had the same injury as him, and and he mentioned that it was always nice whenever he was unsure, he's feeling like this or feeling like that. He always went to them and they said, "No, listen, this is good." Um, it, I felt the same way, and so uh, yeah, I think um, I think yeah, he, the, he, it it probably. Um, uh, amplifies that if you get your head on something and you're willing to work incredibly hard and you've got specialists around you and you're willing to sacrifice everything, you know, uh, anything is possible. Can you just give us an insight to what he's actually had to go through to get through this? Has it been sort of round the clock? Is there sessions? Just give us a flavor of what he's going to do. Yeah, I think not just that. It's the whole holistic approach, you know. So obviously, there's the uh, in the beginning, uh, obviously, he had the operation, uh, the procedure must have been spot on, you know. Obviously, the, from the surgeon uh, who, who did the operation, I mean, it, it had to be a spot on, uh, neat, tidy uh, uh, operation. And then, uh, then you obviously go into a physio. Probably the physios having a, a, a more of you uh, um, in terms of getting range of movement back and getting uh, the the inflammation down after post surgery, 
and and then to get um, the full range of movement pain free, and then it probably transitions over into the performance team, and uh, from nutrition uh, straight to the strength and conditioning guys, the rehab guys, the physios, so uh, the doctor, the sp- sports physician, the then the, the specialist. It's a it's a holistic approach. Um, so yeah, that that's what he went through, um, and it's it uh, you have to you can only. You can only push as hard as you recover. So, so uh, the, the, when he pushed, uh, obviously they had to make sure that the recovery was up to standard. So the the soft tissue specialist that we have within our group, so everybody had this. It's, it's, it's uh, it was a, a full on medical team uh, performance. I would say. Was there any other doubt in your mind, or were you always confident that he was going to come back? I, 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 as a whenever there's rehab or injuries, you you are never hundred percent sure. You know, you you is they got certain markers that they got to hit over time, and he was hitting them consistently, and even uh, sometimes a little bit quicker than we expected. So, and that's that. that those markers are are I don't want to say scientific, but it's up. It's uh, not subjective markers. Objective, you know. So, does he have full range of movement? Does he have full knee extension? Does he have this? Does he have that? And the moment they hit all those markers, then they can progress to the next stage. You know. So, in the beginning, you're not sure. You know, set back and come like this, and then you have to pull back a bit, and you have to wait until it settles down, and then you can push again. So, um, yeah, I'm, no, I, I, I think. He, I don't think he had one setback uh, uh, in all the markers that he's made. Question on the app? Jeez, not actually, but I think I would give say it's part of my captain is CEO. I think how important to have a self captain in the squad. Yeah, no, it's always nice to have CEO back. We worked out with the at the Sharks. He's just a good leader, good player, motivates us well, speaks to me well, gives me advice on certain things. So, yeah, it's always been good to have CEO back. Uh, you know, in Wales, we've got three different captains in three different weeks. For the squad in general, Jack, is that something that's great to have? Just settled captains. Yeah, we, we we also have a couple of we we had a couple of captains as well. I think uh, uh, Bongi uh, led us well last week uh, when we were in Argentina or the previous test match. Uh, the test match before that, I think it was, yes, I well, can't even remember, well, Duane. Well, well, well. And before that, it was Eben. And then before that, it was Duane again. So I think we're blessed in, in that sense that we have we have really good leaders. And um, and there's a couple of leaders that that that, that leads their franchises in the URC, you know. So so we've got, we, we are fortunate in that position that we, we have really, really good leaders. But, but Sia has always, from the start, we said, listen, he is our World Cup captain until he's a out. So from the start, we knew we had we will have interim captains, um, and, uh, but and and he was announced within the group as the World Cup captain until he's, he is excluded of the World Cup if his his rehab didn't go according to plan. Since Wales' final war match, have you caught any of the games and what have you made of them and what are you expecting on Saturday? Yes, uh, no. Listen, yeah, no. We watch all of the games. Um, no, they they uh, obviously they, they, there's been a personnel change, or, uh, some personnel change from from the Six Nations, and I think uh, if you look at Warren, I think he's backing a lot more. Uh, not a, not I, I can't say youngsters, but I mean there's younger players coming through, and there's some older players, especially I would say in the forwards. And I don't want to generalise, but I think you guys will know what I mean in terms of the the, the locks, if you, in terms of the loose trio. But if you look at the the back line and and, and on those young players, the uh, not young players, the uh, the younger guys that's stepping in now for for the tip pricks and those uh, those boys. They are they are tough. Uh, um, I think the captain, uh, I said the other day, he's almost like a praying mantis over a, a ball. I think he he was leading the stats for poachers uh, uh, in in the URC. So so obviously uh, they they quality rugby players and and uh, you can see the energy with the, within them. Not that they didn't have, but yes, they were always. Uh, I think if you look at uh, uh, statistically the test matches between South Africa and Wales, I think it's twenty one nineteen. I think there's two or three points between uh, uh, the test matches since we've been back uh, from from Munster in 20, uh, 2018, Myself and Rassi. So I think it's it, it's a it's always been a tight affair, and what what do we expect from them? Exactly that we we expect it's going to be a grind. Uh, uh, they, they they if you look at what they did with England, they uh, in terms of it was a grind there. Uh, um, so yeah, that's what we expect. It's going to be a proper test match for us, which is which is awesome.
Uh, Jacques, ahead of 29, obviously, you won the World Cup, but maybe the preparation wasn't as you would have liked it. Do you feel like this is a stronger squad going into this the title defence? I definitely think we have more depth. Uh, uh, than we we had in 2019, and and obviously we we only started in 2018. So you you we we tried to build as much depth as you can, but you 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 wanted to get test caps into players. You want to get players uh, exposure uh, to to uh, our the, our style of coaching and what in the environment. So you didn't we didn't probably have the luxury that we had over this last couple of years where we could rotate the squad in which we've done frequently i mean we we made 11 changes to this team i don't think going forward uh you will see 11 12 changes uh, again uh, uh going forward there will be changes but maybe four or five changes but it won't be uh, in some games i think in the bluefontein game against wales the one that they beat us there in uh, south africa i think we made 18 or 19 changes from the one week to the other week and the reason for that is we wanted to create as much squad depth as possible again we 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 feel we felt that we had, we, had, we had that luxury. Obviously, sometimes you do take risk and performance can suffer uh, due to the fact that you change combinations the whole time you, 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 um, and you put the squad under pressure in terms of that. But we felt it was good pressure. Uh, they had to build combinations with each other the whole time. Um, so, yeah, I think in terms of that, we have got better uh, uh, squad. We, we, we have better squad depth uh, than we had in 2019. It is, I was just wondering, you mentioned 2019 several times as a quite close semi final in that Wales and South Africa. Is that going to happen again? Uh, definitely. I, I think if you look at the games, it was like uh, even uh, uh, if if you take that from that semi final on onwards, if you take the test match we played in Pretoria, we had to really fight hard to get back into that game, and then we we snuck it at the end. Then the one at Bloemfontein, we were comfortable i would say not comfortable but let's say we had a six or nine point lead and and then uh we we made some subs and we gave exposure to some guys who's now been uh, the 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 uh, kurtley audiences and the uh, uh the kane and moody's they got exposure to test match rugby and and we lost that test match and then uh obviously we had the last game in in um in cape town but if you look at the the just since since then i mean it it's been quite uh, uh tight and and we we had our first victory uh, um, against Wales, I think, in the back end of 2021. I think uh, we, when we played them here at Cardiff, that was the first time we had a, a victory in quite some time. So it is it's going to be tight, and, it, and that's exactly what you want before you go into a World Cup. So yes, uh, to answer your question, uh, it can potentially be that tight. It's going to be a grind. Chance of a Wales South Africa semi final in front. So, yeah, well, it's always open. <laughs> Any other questions from there? Jack, just the, the depth that you mentioned, does that give you confidence that, as things stand, there's still a long way to go, obviously, but that you can have a successful World Cup defence and, and win it back to back? Yeah, obviously, that's that, that that's our mission. You know, we we and uh, we we thought it's obviously we have a little bit of a s older squad. I think if you look at our squad, uh, uh, not old, but uh, they're four years older, and there's probably a third of the team that are, that, that have uh, probably two thirds of the team that have been part of that 2019 World Cup. So they're obviously four years older. And uh, and we always say what you lose with with the experienced squad is uh, is you lose a little bit of agility and speed and availability of older players, um, um, but you you get calm heads, you get experience, you get good leaders uh, like we've mentioned. You've uh, so so these things that you that you gain and things that you that, that you lose. So I think for us uh, um, to get backup players that have been exposed to rugby that have had good performance for us was 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 obviously the route we decided to go uh, after the 2019 World Cup and um, yeah. Can we take a few questions online? You want to ask another one? Oh, I was going to ask Rajiv. Yes, obviously Postal Mars, that's key, key example of that. There's the squad there. Uh, yeah. Oh no, yeah, it's it's always good to to have competition. It brings out the best out of you. So. So for me, it's just going out there and enjoying myself. I'm just doing my job and enjoying it. So yeah. Did you see that as added pressure? There being so much competition. How do you sort of avoid trying to be an individual and try and prove a point to to your coach? Not actually. It doesn't actually. It just brings out the best of you. So for me, it's just going out there, nailing my job, 
and also having fun and it's not it doesn't bring added pressure it's just bringing the best out of you as a person and as a player perfect uh can take a questions from uh, uh online and then we'll wrap it up so let's go to ashbach Thanks, Zina. Just a quick one for Jacques and Jaden. Jacques, just your selection uh, at lock with the two monster guys, and then the two wings are also quite interesting. And then Jaden, obviously, it's been a, a tough couple of months for you with the passing of your dad. Uh, uh, how do you feel at the moment in terms of that? And do you feel it's almost like uh, you want to play for him also now uh, in this World Cup? Can I go first? Yeah, okay, so uh, in terms of the locks, yeah, I think Ashfak, it's, it's literally spreading the load. I think if you look at the game minutes, uh, a, a guy like um, uh, uh, RG, he's probably played, uh, he's played the least minutes of our locks. So again, it's nice giving him a start uh, before the World Cup and him giving, uh, getting some proper, hopefully, uh, good minutes under his belt before before we go into the World Cup. So that's the the, the lock selection uh, that we went with there. It's again, it's literally spreading the load. And the same uh, with the wings, you know, uh, um, it, it's it's just spreading spreading uh, the load as much as we can. Uh, my Pimpi played last weekend uh, um, and uh, uh, um, Kanan gets another opportunity this weekend. Um, so yeah, it's it's literally spreading the load. But all of them are like I think if if you look at, uh, I said the other day uh, before we played Argentina, uh, the three test matches that we won. I think the first one, Kanan was made, uh, Kurtley was man of the match. Uh, then uh, the second one that we played against Argentina, I think uh, Cheslin was man of the match. And then the Argentina game that we played in Buenos Aires, uh, um, Kanan was man of the match. So, so I think if you look at our, our wingers, they are they are all in form and they they can produce and play for us. So yeah, it's just literally giving everybody an opportunity and to try and spread the load as much as we can uh, um, up to so that we can peak uh, when we go into the World Cup uh, in that Scottish Test match. Yeah, I know for me it's been a tough couple of months, So, but for me the main thing now is just to to get into the field and play and just do what I love. So, yep, just coming back and enjoying myself. So, yeah. That's it. Um, thanks, you know. Um, my question is um, for Jaden. <clears throat> Jaden, in terms of you and, and, and Grant, just how is your relationship between the two of you guys? And also, again, you know, in terms of that um, game management, you starting the game and him just coming to accelerate um, the, the, in the second half. How is that uh, working out for you? Yeah, I know me and Grant, we even, we're roommates, so we know each other well. We're roommates at the Sharks also, so we have a good understanding between us. So. For us, it's always friends on the, I mean, friends off the field, and then we come on the field, we'll be super competitive with each other. So just to keep each other sharp. So, so yeah. Um, Percy, I know you want to probably ask an Afrikaans question. So let's wrap it up with you. I actually want to ask English questions, Zina, surprisingly. Oh, uh, <laughs> you've had your chance, Percy. You've had your chance then. Martin? He hasn't. Hi, Sharp. Jacques, can you please give us? Hi, Jacques. Can you give me an update on the progress of Andre and Lacanu? And if, um, uh, if required, would they be fit to start the World Cup against Scotland? Uh, it's more than eh? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Martin. Yeah. Uh, so the uh, yeah, uh, uh, both of them are. So uh, I think I've mentioned it. So I'm going to try and explain it again. Uh, so Andre, he's not currently. I would say he's not injured. He's returning from injury. So his his injury is is subsided, but he's still in a process of return to play. And obviously, with that comes uh, like what we did with Jaden and Sia. It, it, there's a there's a process that that gets followed by the 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 medical team and by the performance team. So uh, and that's and I don't want to be too scientific, but there's a certain load that a player must do during the week to try and get a performance on Saturday. So it's trying to expose him to that load and let him get comfortable with that load with his injury and trying not to risk it so much uh, that he re-injures himself. So that's a that's the balance that we sit with Andre. But currently, 
uh, he doesn't have uh, uh, his calf injury isn't an injury. It's a, it's an injury busy recovering. With uh, with Lucanio, it's different. Uh, so Lucanio is still injured. Uh, so he obviously sustained the injury uh, two weeks ago, and he's still recovering from that. But he will go in uh, um, probably over the next week or two. He will go into uh, the same process that Andre is currently in now. Uh, so yeah, and what's the probably the fr uh, the next question will be what's the difference between him and Sia and Jaden? I mean, they uh, Jaden was probably clear to play probably a month, six weeks ago. So so they they were they were clear to return to full training and take contact and tackle and kick a ball and all those rugby related stuff where the other guys are like a guy like Andre is still busy with that uh, return to full contact, return to, uh, uh, to f uh, full out having a test week uh, or full on preparation week. He's still building up that tolerance and load. Uh, so that's where he is currently. And uh, how long will it take? Yes, it, it's like I said, with any rehab thing, uh, um, if there's if there's a stiffness or setback or uh, uh, in terms of uh, something that happens, then we step back a bit and we, we, we slow down and then we add load again and see if we can tolerate it. So it's almost like a give and take thing, you know, yeah. Uh, okay, first of all, Presumably, hang, just, can I just follow up, just get an answer on, presumably they're only with you, though, because you have a degree of confidence that they will be fit to play during the World Cup. Yeah, they're not in the 33. Uh, is it Martin again? Martin, they're not in the 33. So uh, if there's an injury uh, and they go through full progression and they full on fit and they cleared by the medical team, then they will be up for selection. But currently they haven't been cleared by the medical team and they are not in the 33 uh, currently. So so if there's not a if they not if they don't get cleared first, that's point number one, then we can't select them because they obviously then they're injured. And when they cleared and they are cleared by the medical team and they are up for selection, then if there's an injury within the squad, they can get selected. Uh, I hope uh, uh, Martin, does it make sense? Yes, it just I, I remember you saying about a week ago that you were confident that they would be fit for Scotland if required. Yes. Yeah. Well, hopefully. Uh, uh, um, I, I don't. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure about Lucanio. Hopefully, Andre, if he gets cleared by the medical team, and like I say, he's now in the process of returning to. Uh, he's obviously returned to training, and now the next progression. So they go RTT, return to training. The next process will RTP, return to play. So he's still busy with getting into that uh, uh, facet of his rehab. Martin, we need to wrap up. So can we just take one last question from Percy? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. See now, I'm indebted to you. Um, my question is uh, Jaden, um, Jacques. Um, for a moment, I just want to ask a general question. Jaden, so 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 um, uh, just as a follow-up question to what I think uh, Ashfaq asked you, can I ask you? Just a week ago, we were introduced. Um, the 33-man elite squad were introduced to the yes. country. Did you ever think after sustaining that short shoulder injury earlier this year and being probably being the number one scrum in my opinion back then, did you ever think that you would be walking over the stage and being kept as one of the World Cup players um, last week, th th Tuesday? Yeah, no, uh, I think it was Chuck that asked me this. I was very <laughs> nervous. So, yeah, when, when they actually, actually asked me, and I was super, super nervous because I didn't play and things happened that I couldn't play. So yeah, I was super, super nervous. So yeah, I'm just grateful that I made the, the 33. So yeah. Fantastic. Thank you very much, guys. We'll send out the recording shortly. Thank you, Jaden. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, everyone.